Hello, for today's lecture we're going to be talking about two-dimensional kinematics in polar coordinate systems. So we are still talking about curvilinear motion here, uh, and curvilinear motion is any motion that's going to follow a curved path, so not in a single dimension. Uh, and we're specifically going to be focusing on planar motion, uh, which is motion along a curve in two dimensions. We restrict ourselves to one plane here. Um, so options for two-dimensional motion, uh, we can analyze things with the rectangular coordinate systems using just x and y. Uh, we can analyze things with normal and tangential coordinate systems where we have our coordinate system uh, kind of attached to the body that we're looking at. Uh, kind of the observer is moving uh, and the origin is moving with them. And then finally what we're going to talk about today is polar coordinates uh, where we have some fixed uh, observation point that we're using uh, and then we're tracking the particle uh, using an angle and a magnitude uh, from that stationary origin point. And there's a reason we might want to do this uh, in certain cases we're going to talk about. Um, so the basic way this works, so starting off with position, uh, we're going to have our position vector r, uh, and that's going to be some distance r away from our origin point uh, in the ur direction. And that ur direction is whatever direction it is from the observation point uh, to the particle that we're looking at. Uh, so in this case, we're going to have some angle theta uh, for this two-dimensional system. So that ur vector is the uh, direction uh, pointing towards the particle. Uh, and the other thing we have is the u theta direction, so our second direction that we have here uh, is going to be 90 degrees counterclockwise from whatever the ur direction is. So we've got ur direction and u theta direction so far. All right, so to find velocity, uh, we would take the derivative of position over time. So the derivative of the position, uh, well, it's going to be r ur, uh, and we need to use the product rule because both r is changing, so that distance can change over time, uh, but also ur is going to be moving as the particle moves through, th through space. Uh, so I've got the r dot times ur plus r times ur dot. Uh, so that's going to be uh, the derivative there. Uh, so we can't have the derivative of the unit vector just staying like it is. Uh, we're going to take the derivative uh, of the rotating unit vector, and we talked about how this uh, comes to be uh, with our normal and tangential coordinate systems, but the derivative of ur dot is going to be theta dot uh, u theta direction. Uh, so the velocity is going to be r dot in the ur direction plus r times theta dot in the u theta direction. So those are the two components of my velocity there. All right, so moving on to acceleration, I would need to take the derivative of the velocity. So starting with velocity, uh, I'm going to have multiple product rules going on here. So the uh, first one, uh, so r dot can change over time, and so can ur over time. So r double dot, the derivative of r dot times ur, uh, plus r dot times ur dot. Uh, so the time derivative of that ur direction over time. Uh, the second piece, it's actually a triple product rule, uh, because r can change over time, theta dot can change over time, and the u theta direction changes over time as well. So each one of those pieces uh, can change over time as well. So this is all the components kind of laid out like this, uh, and we've got two pieces. Uh, we're going to have this ur dot, the derivative of that one unit vector, and over here we've got the derivative of the u theta uh, vector as these both of these things rotate around. All right, so derivative of unit of the rotating unit vector uh, is going to be the following. So I've got uh, we figured this out before. So the derivative of that u r vector over time is going to be theta dot time in the u theta direction, uh, and the derivative of u theta, uh, so u theta dot, is going to be negative theta dot in the u r direction. All right, so why does this negative show up? Uh, and the reason, if we look at our diagram from before, uh, we can see why. So when we're talking about the uh, change, I go from UR to uh, the black to the blue, uh, that's my magnitude is going to be theta dot. It's uh, kind of whatever the time derivative is, the velocity of the end of that vector. Um, and it is, it's in the UR direction. So the UR direction is this black one, or sorry, the U theta direction is this black one, uh, and it's moving up in that same direction. Uh, now if we look over here, uh, so as we rotate uh, counterclockwise, so positive theta dot, uh, the tip of this vector, it's still going to be theta dot for the magnitude, 
uh, but the direction is going to the left, whereas the UR direction is going to the right. So this is actually the negative UR direction. Uh, and that's why we have negative theta dot UR uh, for the derivative there. All right, so simplify this whole thing. And by simplify, I mean take all the pieces that are in front of the UR and put them together. Take all the pieces that are in front of a U theta, put those together. So the acceleration vector uh, in the polar coordinate system is going to be r dot minus r theta dot squared. Uh, and in the u theta direction, we're going to have r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot. Uh, two of these pieces actually have uh, names that we commonly use. So this first part, so the negative r theta dot squared, that's usually called centrifugal acceleration. Uh, so that's centrifugal acceleration. Another piece that we uh, commonly will talk about uh, is this 2 r dot theta dot. Uh, that is going to be uh, Coriolis acceleration. So this Coriolis acceleration is here. Uh, centrifugal acceleration is here. Uh, that's just two pieces that we can have of kind of the four pieces uh, for the acceleration. All right, so we take this uh, and we put this together. So we've got the position. It's going to be r in the ur direction. The velocity is going to be r dot in the ur direction plus r theta dot in the u theta direction. Uh, An acceleration is what we just talked about. So r double dot minus r theta dot squared in the ur direction and r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot in the u theta direction. Uh, so we can separate these down, bat out into components. So I've got all the r components on the left, all the theta components on the right. Uh, and it is important to remember uh, that even though these are not the coordinate systems we are used to with like x and y, uh, these are still just components. We can break any vector down into components in those two directions. Uh, so say I had this velocity vector here. I could break that down into r and theta components and then relate those back to things like r, uh, which is the distance, and theta, which is the angle from kind of our uh, satellite dish to the plane over here. Uh, and then, you know, derivatives um, over time, so r dot and theta dot, or how those things have changed over time, r double dot, theta double dot, or how those, um, the double derivatives are the accelerations of those two pieces. Um, so we can break it down into r and theta components, just like we can break things down to x and y. Uh, and more importantly, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem to go backwards. So if this was actually a satellite tracking station, uh, and it's tracking a plane uh, like this, what it'd be tracking over time, the raw data would be the distance to the target. So it's going to kind of record the amount of time it takes to go out and back. Uh, and it's going to record the precise angle to that target. So if I've got detailed records of r and theta over time, uh, I have the position at any one time, the, the angle at any one time, and if I've got multiple uh, kind of recordings of this over time, I can figure out r dot and theta dot by just simply taking the derivative of that r and the theta function over time, uh, take the derivative again to get r double dot and theta double dot, uh, and then that's going to give me vr and v theta by simply plugging those values into the equation I found before. Once I have vr and v theta, if I want to know the overall speed of the plane, I would use the Pythagorean theorem. So vr squared plus v theta squared, take the square root of that to find the, the magnitude or the speed. Uh, and then to find the angle, I could just use arctangent function. So if I do you know, opposite over adjacent, that would give me this angle theta right here. That would give me the trajectory of the plane, the current direction that's traveling uh, with respect to, at least with respect to the r direction that I have right here. So that's all we have for today. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.